Several reasons to get excited with the all-new Vivo V30. Hindi tumakas ang kanyang presyo, lumakas ang kanyang processor, and gumanda rin ang kanyang camera performance. The V29 has left me with a good impression, and itong V30 has a Snapdragon 7 Gen 3, 50MP na main camera sensor with a bigger aura light, 50MP din ang kanyang front-facing camera for selfie lovers. Tara, pag-usapan natin! So, kita na natin ang kanyang design is a lot more refreshing. This one is the bloom white ang hawak natin. It looks very floral and very parang yung pearlish design and it looks really great. For the pricing naman, ang Vivo V35G, ang kanyang 12256 has a same price point as the V29 which is good news for all of us. 24999 and ang kanyang 12512 will be priced at 27999. This is a UFS 3.1 and LPDDR5X. Link on the description. Now, ang kanyang form factor is definitely nice. I really love the way it is. Ang sarap hawakan sa aking kamay and what I like dito sa kanya is hindi fingerprint magnet sa likod. Even though the medyo floral, floral pero kung nilagay mo naman ng hard case, I don't think makikita mo pa naman ang design nito sa likod. But there are other colors that you can definitely choose from. One of the things that kakaiba sa kanya is ang kanyang camera bump dito is quite thin no? for a really nice camera like this. And what I like dito sa kanya is still controllable ang kanyang aura light and it is a lot bigger than the V29 series. Yung V29, ang liit ng kanyang ring this time around, pinalaki na ng gusto which gives you more flexibility kailangan ko medyo mas wide ang sinushoot mo, mas malaki ang coverage ka ng ilaw and it's also controllable depende sa gusto mong warm or cool ang kanyang ilaw, it's very flexible. Now, mapapansin mo ang kanyang punch hole dito is not that small though it's not that big either. So yung kanyang baba is not super slim so medyo it will take a little bit of yung space away from your display. Now overall goods to goods kasi pwede naman ako mag one hand texting about go from edge to edge. Now this phone is being powered by the Snapdragon 7 Gen 3. It's quite new and I know that this one based on side-to-side -side comparison with the D7050 ni MediaTek which is present inside the Oppo Reno 11 which is probably ang kanyang pinaka-competitor dito sa kanyang price segmentation. Now based on my research, ang Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 has the better performance, better score sa Antutu benchmark and better na clock speed. And nakakuha siya ng near 800,000 points dito sa aking Antutu benchmark na checking and this is the breakdown score. Sa Wildlife Extreme naman, 91% ang kanyang stability with 1,400 points sa kanyang loop score. This is the score na nakuha ako sa Geekbench and ito naman sa GPU ng Geekbench. I was surprised ang gandang graph ko dito sa thermal throttling. Nang throttle siya sa 91% ng kanilang maximum performance and makita mo all green ang kanilang graph which is good. Now, itong phone na ito has 5,000 mAh of battery which can charge up to 80 watts na fast charging flash charge ni Vivo. Now, charging from 0 to 100 takes you roughly an hour to complete the full charging cycle. And using it on a day-to-day -day basis, it can last you for the whole day without problem. Nung tinest ko si PC Mark na battery stress test dito sa phone na ito, nung tinay ko siya for 2 cycles, nag-fail siya, so I did try it manually. So, nagtapos ako for 13 hours na screen on time dito sa phone na ito using a 50% brightness and 60 Hz screen refresh rate. Now, itong phone na ito is a 6.78 inch na curved AMOLED display with 120 Hz of screen refresh rate, 2,800 nits ang kanyang peak brightness, 90% ang kanyang screen to body ratio, and 453 ang kanyang PPI. And ang kanyang front glass is being protected by Shot Alpha. So, narinig natin, no, there are quite some other brands ng glass protection other than Corning Gorilla Glass, no, that is also being used sa mga mid-range smartphone these days. Now, pagdating naman sa kanyang display, I would say if you're scrolling sa social media, sa mga reels, ang sarap gumamit itong phone na ito dahil sobrang smooth ang 
experience ko dito. And I have no problem even under direct sunlight. Pag nanood ako ng mga shorts sa tanghaling tapat, walang problema makita mo lahat ang nakadisplay dito dahil 2,800 nits ang kanya maximum brightness. And kung mahilig ka naman manood ng mga movies dito sa Netflix at sa YouTube, it has a level 1 wide band security level. And watching every single film dito, I'm sure na mag-enjoy ka dahil ang ganda ng display niya dito, punchy and very vibrant ang kanyang mga colors. Pwede mo pa i-calibrate sa display settings niya to better enhance it and to customize it according sa gusto mo. Now, one of the things na napansin ko dito sa kanilang loudspeaker, pwede mo isa ganang kanilang volume to 100% ng kanilang maximum performance. So, gusto lang natin pakinggan kung gano'ng kalakas nga ba ang kanilang 150%. So, yan guys, 150% siya ngayon. Well, for me, quite loud naman siya, but medyo hindi lang kasing loud ng mga flagship level phones. But for a mid-ranger, malakas na siya. Now, gusto lang natin makita ang gaming performance nitong phone na ito. So, I did play Call of Duty Mobile and Farlight 84. These are the maximum graphical settings na pwede natin makita dito sa dalawang game na ito. And playing Call of Duty Mobile, you'd expect a really nice experience dito sa kanya. The screen is very responsive. Yung kanyang gameplay is okay. I don't have any frame drops problem on the way dahil naglaro ako ng halos tatlong VR matches. And it was really nice. Kaya magbatuhan kayo ng smoke one sa isang certain point, I don't think it will lag. Now, pag natin sa Farlight 84, sinagad din natin ang kanyang maximum graphical settings. And I was able to to squeeze out a good experience dito sa phone na ito. Playing around 5 na Battle Royale games dito and nag-level up ako ng 2 times, I was able to enjoy it immersively dito sa phone na ito. Probably not to the point na kasing ganda siya ng mga flagship phones, you feel some minor frame drops along the way, but overall, the gameplay was good. Kahit medyo nagbabakbakan kami mo, pang pito kami on a certain place na nagbabarilan kami, I didn't feel any lag. No? So, importante yan sa mga gameplays like mga Battle Royale kasi once na naglag ka, most likely, pinatay ka na ng kalaban mo. Ang pinakamainim na na-achieve na itong phone na ito is around 43 degrees Celsius based sa akin mild na thermal scanner. So, if you want it to cool down way faster, use a phone cooler like the Flybe GB6. Now, pag-usapan na natin ang kanyang camera module, itong phone na ito has a 50MP na main camera sensor with OIS and a 50MP na ultra-wide lens. Both of them are omnivision na sensors and it can shoot up to 4K and 3D. And of course, alam naman natin this one is being powered by Aura Light. Definitely, it does spell the difference. And kanyang front-facing camera is a 50MP na main camera sensor with a 4K 30fps na shooting capability. And this one is a Samsung ISOCELL naman na sensor. Now, quickly, pakita ko lang sa inyo two shots na nakuha ko dito sa aking table right now. Taking itong shot na ito without Aura Light na ka-on, medyo makita medyo mas pale siya pati itong box ng Vivo V30 natin. Now, once na tinurn on natin ang Aura Light, makita mo medyo mas maganda ang output niya. Mas lalo na dito sa figurine na Goku, mas maganda, mas litaw si Goku dito dahil mas focus sa subject yung Aura Light niya, which definitely will give you the better shot pag naka-on ang yung Aura Light. So, analyzing some outdoor shots na nakuha natin dito from Vivo V30, and I would say itong picture na ito, no, out of all the different cameras na nagamit ko dito sa shot na ito, I think this is a little bit more dramatic. Parang mas maganda to post sa inyong Instagram and makita mo yung background niya na parang in-enhance niya to the point na parang mas maganda siya tingnan than the other cameras. Though, medyo mas saturated ang mga greens niya and makita mo all of the details are pretty much preserved over here. And say, equally said din dito sa bato na ito, uh, kita mo lahat ng mga vines dito, yung mga uh, bat mga buta sa bato, kitang kita dito. So, using yung kind of ultra-wide shot, this is how it looks like. Medyo gloomy lang siya and this is the normal shot. 2 times zoom shot and zooming it all the way up to 5 times zoom. Na makita mo pagdating sa 5 times zoom, medyo hindi na masyado ma-appreciate yung shot kasi blurry na siya pag zoom in mo. Now again, taking in some shots na from the outdoors. Now this is another ultra wide shot. This is a normal one. And this is a 2 times zoom shot. This is another ultra wide shot. A normal shot and a 2 times zoom shot. You'll see the difference between this one and this one. Yung green na ito, no, is medyo nag-lighten up as compared to sa green na itong normal shot, which is a little bit darker dito sa puno. Now, if you're taking some outdoor shot, you'd see itong camera na would definitely enhance it to make it a little bit more dramatic para sa inyong mata. And lalo na pag post mo sa Instagram, sa Facebook, I think it's going to look a lot better than the other cameras out there. Now, if you're taking in indoor low light, you'll get some really nice shot like this sa mga malls. And kung hilig mo rin is gumamit ng wide lens, this is how it looks like dito sa loob ng mall. This is a normal shot. 
and this is a 2 times zoom shot. And zooming it all the way up to 5 times zoom, this is how it looks like. If you're a little bit food photography, you'd see some really nice shots taken from this camera. And you can see cookie crumbs dito is very much preserved in this picture. Na ito. And further taking some bread shot dito, you'd see how beautiful the shot is. No? Preserved and preserved the details, niya, pati mga oil sa bacon, kitang kita pa rin. And if you'd like to take some flower shot, this is how it looks like naman sa indoor. You'd see how ganda na pagka-preserved ng details dito sa Stargazer is definitely good. Now, this is one of my favorite shot. If you zoom it in dito sa carvings niya, you'd see yung ganda ng details na naka-preserved dito sa mag na ito. So now, further showing some more food shot, you'll really appreciate yung camera na ito. Even na medyo low light and medyo yellowish ang ilaw. Maganda ang pagka-reproduce ng mga pictures na ito. Itong sisig na ito. This is a squid sisig. Pati itong mga toron, no? Ang ganda ng pagka-preserved ng details. And even this one, ang halo halo. You'd really appreciate yung camera niya for product photography. Kita mo mga details dito sa sapatos ni Steph Curry. And if you take this camera into night photography, you get some really nice shot like this one. Uh, sa loob to ng time zone, medyo dark ang spot niya. I was able to get some of these really nice shots sa loob ng time zone at a very dark place. Now, kung ang healing mo naman is selfie, this camera is able to perform be it indoor or outdoor. I'd say you'd really appreciate it. No? Lalo ka niya pagka-portrait shot. Many of the shots na nakuha ko are really nice and na-enjoy ko naman taking some shots using its camera. Na kung kukuha ka naman ng video using the front-facing camera, it's a little shaky. Hindi siya sobrang shaky though. I think meron tong OIS, but hindi lang ganong kaganda lang ganang OIS. Decent naman siya, but a little bit shaky. And checking this one out, you'd see na medyo may kunting shake siya. Hindi lang karapal na shake. And taking a 4K video naman using the rear camera, you'd see smooth naman ka ng transition. You'd see na when you're walking, you're panning. Ang ganda ng transition ditong camera na to, no As long as you have a steady hand, and if you have a good, really nice gimbal, it should get the job done. Now guys, with a price point na $24,999, this one is exactly the same price point ng Oppo Reno 11. So, sino mas magandang piliin? Ako, I'll personally choose the Vivo V30 as my next daily driver. Bakit nga ba? Mas maganda ang Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 kaysa Diamond City 7050. Better performance, better clock speed, better ang kanya anti to performance. Two, better camera performance, lalo na sa low light and food photography, is si Vivo V30 as opposed kay Reno 11. And three, I think better ang form factor nito phone na ito, and I like it better than the Reno. Reno 11. Personal preference. And of course, meron siya aura ring light dito na wala si Reno 11. Now, if you're looking for a phone with a nice camera performance at a 25 pesos price point na budget, Vivo V30 is definitely your bet. So guys, kung nagusta nito video nito, don't forget to share it to your friends. Any subscription to this channel would be awesome. I'll see you on the next one. And so, ako para si Richmond, and you're watching Gadget Sidekick. What's up? like and subscribe to my channel don't forget to hit that notification bell for one of my latest uploads click the dito and for one of my popular uploads click here